Hello and welcome to the 51st video in this series programming in Chess Engine NC. So you remember when I talked back originally uh, two or three videos ago about how we're going to go about programming the search. I said that we were going to need something where we could extract the principal variation, so the best line found by the program to the given search depth. And of all the methods available for doing that, I thought it might be nice to use a what's called a hash table, or we'll call it a PV table in this case, a principal variation table. Because although in this engine we'll just have this small table for our principal variation, it can later be extended if you want to into a full-blown transition table, which can be used to speed up the search. So the way we're going to do this is in this video we'll write the code for it, and the next one we'll just make some quick little tests for it in the console. Not any thorough testing, but just very basic testing. Enter a few moves and see if we can saw a PV line and get it back out again. And this video will make the declarations for actually making this happen. So I've defined a new file, I made a new file, sorry, called pvtable.c. It's got the standard definitions at the top here. And of course, this has been added as well to the make file. The next thing we need to do is going to defs.h, and we actually need to define a couple of new structures in here. And some of this again will be copy paste for me to be able to speed things up. And we're going to define the structures required for our table. So we're going to have a structure called PV entry. So this is a principal variation entry. So when a move is found in the search that beats alpha, in that position we shall then store the move and the unique key, the position key, that led to that move. So when we then later on look up, we can say, OK, in a certain position, do we have a best move? That's when we're getting our best line back out. So an entry to store inside our table will contain the move, the best move found, and the key. The next thing we need is the actual structure for the table itself. And the way that will work is we'll have a pointer, which points to an element, and then we'll have a number of entries. And what we're going to do in, is what will actually happen is we'll initialize and allocate some memory for this pointer depending on how many entries we want to store. Now I could of course just create a, uh, an array straight away of let's say 50,000 entries or something and be done with it. But for the future, because it will most likely turn into a hash table, we'll want to be able to eventually dynamically allocate our hash table because one of the options for chess engines in the GUI is to change the size of the hash table or the transposition table and so doing it this way allows us to free the memory that this point has been allocated and also then re reallocate this memory so this is why we're doing it in this way and how this works you'll see when we start writing the code to initialize. Now, the last thing we need to do is actually declare a table and have it inside our board structure so I'll call it PV table and I'm going to make this a pointer in this fashion so an array with one entry. Good, so that's now our table inside our board structure. And now we need to go back to TV, PV table and start writing the code to actually set up our table. So the first thing I have here is I have our code to initialize the PV table and I want to have it in two megabytes in size. This hexadecimal number here should be the equivalent of one megabyte in bytes and I want to multiply that too to have two megabytes allocated when we initialize and we take in in this uh, this um, function as an argument we take a pointer to a PV table so that'll be if I go back to defs.h point to to this kind of structure so we'll actually be sending in this part of our board structure and then what we do is we set the number of entries equal to the PV size in bytes divided by the size in bytes of a single entry so that simply then should make pretty common sense is how many entries of the type of PV entry can we fit inside our two megabytes and then I'm subtracting two from this total here because we're going to be index accessing this, this memory using an indexing method and I just want to make absolutely 100% sure that we don't go over the end of this so I'll subtract 2 from this. The next thing 
is I've got this free command here which frees any memory that our table pointer, so we've got table and the table pointer, if I go back to defs.h and up the structure here, here, might be pointing at. Now when we first initialize, it won't be pointing at anything, but say we're calling initialize again, then it'll free the memory that it's been pointing to. And later on, if we wanted to make this flexible, of course we'd also be sending in this PV size here as an argument into the function rather than a constant here to make the size allocation dynamic. And now we've freed the memory that the pointer's pointing at, we can use malloc, so memory allocation to memory allocate to allocate our memory in this fashion. This would also be fairly self-explanatory, the number of entries times the size of the entry, and declare that as a pointer type of our element. So what this essentially is now is a table you could quite easily read as an array that looks like this, as an array of this size like this. It's simply an array declared like this, but we've, de we've dynamically declared the memory for it. And then we call a function which we haven't got yet called clear the table, and this will simply set all keys and moves to naught. And I've got one little line here printing that the table initialization is complete and to show how many entries we actually have inside the table. So the next thing to do is to write our clear table function. And that, as I said, is very simple, and I've already got it here. We'll put this above the initialization. So we make a pointer to our entries, and then we simply loop through every entry in the table. So we set our pointer to the start of the table, so where our table pointer is pointing. We keep going until we're up to the size of the number of entries, and we increment our pointer. And if you're not familiar with pointers, I've done a tuition video, tutorial video on it, but when you increment a pointer in this way, you just step through in memory the size of the element that the pointer is pointing at. And then in the position that the pointer is, we set the key to zero, and actually we'll use our no move constant here to set move also to zero. So that way, if we return from the table, we can test in the search whether we've returned a move or we've returned no move. So now we've got our initialization complete and our clearing complete, we can actually go into board.c and at the bottom here we can actually call our init pv table function and actually send in the position and the pv table as an argument to initialize. And of course we need to put this init pv table function here into defs.h, which I'll do down here. Otherwise, board.c won't be able to use it. And that should all work now. So if I just go to make this, and it's compiled OK, and now I'll just quickly go to run it. And we can see here that the table is initialized with 131,000 entries, which would be more than enough for our needs. I'll just type Q to quit. Good, OK. So that's the first part done. The second part, actually, now I've seen that we're up to about eight minutes, it's quite convenient. The next part will, co the next video, we'll go into pvtable.c and we'll write the store and probe functions to be able to store a move inside this table and another function to be able to read a move out if there is one. And then in the video after that, we'll look at testing these functions to make sure they're working okay. So thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.